Before we start, I want to let you know that a list of materials is in the description section of this video. Start by placing a streamer hook onto your vise. Then start your thread a few hook eye lengths back from the eye of the hook. And wrap that back to the bend of the hook before trimming or breaking off the waist. For the next step, we need something called chickaboo. So if you have a pelt like this one that comes with chickaboo at the base, then use it. Otherwise, you could buy a bag of mini marabou, which is close enough to the same thing. Select two feathers from your bag, or pluck them from the hide. By the way, traditionally, these are tied with Brahma pelts, but soft hackle and chickaboo feathers will do. Then strip off the fibers at the stiff part of the feather. So you can sort of see here where the color and thickness of the feather stem changes. Place these feathers back to back so the curve of the feather angles outward and the tips align, like so. Measure out about a hook shank length, then tie them in so they split the shank on either side. You might need to adjust the stem so they lay on the side of the fly and won't spin. This will ensure a smooth base for our next few steps. So bring your thread back to the base of the tail and clip off the waist of the pieces of feather. So not necessary, but I like adding two strands of flashaboo at this point, for a little flash in the tail. So this is gold holographic flashaboo, but any flashaboo or crystal flash will work. Tie them in so they extend out about the length of the tail, or slightly shorter. Then tie them in on the other side of the tail as well. I find at this point, wetting the tail makes the next few steps easier. If you're using the pelt, select four appropriate sized hackle feathers for your hook. This is a larger hook size, so I'm taking the larger feathers. Or find the right size feathers in your bag of soft hackle. Then strip off all the fuzzy fibers of your feather, leaving you with only the soft hackle. And using a pair of hackle pliers to hold the feather really helps keep track of these feathers and helps you hackle them onto your fly. Then select just the tip of the feather and pull back all the other fibers leaving yourself with just a small tie-in point. Tie this in tight, advancing your thread to just about where the tip of the feather ends. And this will give you just the perfect amount of space to hackle the feather. Now proceed to wrap this feather up the hook with touching wraps. By the way, it helps to tie these in with the curve of the feather angling outward from the hook. They naturally want to rotate when you start to wrap them, so this will ensure that all the feathers curve rearward. Also when wrapping the feather, make sure you pull all the fibers rearward with each wrap. But if you miss one or two here and there, no big deal. Just do your best. Once you reach bare stem, Capture that stem tightly and trim off the waist. So I like to comb out the feather a bit on each one I tie in. First forward, then rearward to ensure all the fibers are aligned properly. Now proceed to do all the same steps for the second feather and the third feather, progressing slowly up the hook shank. Now for the last feather. Clip off the tip so it's not so long, since you won't have as much hook shank to work with. So the front feather is the toughest, as you have to almost wrap up on top of itself. However, this will help create a more bulky head that pushes more water, and allows for a really clean head on the fly as well. If you reach the eye of the fly, don't try to overload the feather. Just tie it off, trying not to trap any of those feather fibers with your wraps. Then pull all the fibers rearward and make a few wraps back on top of the feathers just slightly before clipping off the waist. Now you can clean up the head section with a few smooth wraps and whip finish your fly. Of course, you're going to want to comb out the fly once again, 
before adding some head cement. I like adding this UV resin instead of head cement because it cures so quickly and makes a nice glossy finish. So as you can see here, you can tie it with any soft hackle, including the stuff in the bag. Here's a chartreuse bugger tied with the bag stuff, and also a shorter shank as well. And here is a longer shank hook version that we tied today. So while this fly looks great, it's really hard to tell just how great this fly is until you see it move underwater. Here I'm filming it in my fish tank. As you can see, with short jerks and pauses, the fly flows very nicely in the water. That soft tail moves a lot, like the tail of a fish. Even with quick and steady pulls, there's lots of movement in this fly. But it really does pulsate with each twitch or pull. Given all the movement on this fly, I really do think it's a better type of bugger. Unfortunately, my camera was out of focus here, but I want you to take note of my guppy. The smaller of the two guppies actually tries attacking the fly, thinking it's another fish invading its territory. Here I'm not moving the fly, just letting the flow of my very soft water filter move the fly for me. As you can see, even with the slightest current, the fly pulsates and moves all over the place. Let's see if we can get a little tighter. Every fiber vibrates and creates movement. So I want to remind you that the list of materials are in the description section of this video, but you might have to click the show more and expand the section to view. I have also provided links to these materials with the best prices I could find online. Well thanks for watching! If you liked this video, please share with your friends, and do me a favor, hit that like button. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.